The relationship given by L equals 1.5H is an example of direct variation. Direct variation can be expressed <clears throat> in the form of Y equals KX. In this equation, K is called the constant of variation. So with direct variation, you can use a proportion to find the other sets of corresponding values. So the real important part of this is that with direct variation, that if you set up a proportion, and we know we can set up, solve proportions by cross multiplying and dividing, then we can solve a direct variation question. So an example of direct variation is if y varies directly as x and y is 15 when x is negative 5, find y when x equals 7. So the part where it says if y varies directly as x means that it is direct variation and y equals 15 when x equals negative 5 is one of your proportions. So we will write 15 over negative 5, and then we will set that equal to the other part where it says find y when x equals 7. Well, since we put the y's on top and the x's on bottom, we need to make sure we remain consistent. So if we're trying to find y, we'll put that y on top of the second fraction and put x on bottom, which is going to be, in this case, 7. And then we solve this by cross-multiplying and dividing. So that means negative 5y, that's what we get when we multiply it this way, is going to equal whatever 15 times 7 is, which is 105. And then we divide by negative 5 to get y equals negative 21. Here's another example. If r varies directly as t and r is negative 20 when t is 4, find r when t is negative 6. So I'm going to put the r over the t. Now you can put t over r if you would like. doesn't matter because you're still going to cross multiply the same numbers. Uh, just make sure you remain consistent so that both of the r's are on either the top or the bottom of the fractions. So since I'm going to do r varying directly as t and r is negative 20, when t equals 4, so I'll have negative 20 over 4, set that equal to, we're supposed to find r, when t equals negative 6, and there's my initial setup, I'll cross multiply. So I'll have 4r equals negative 20 times negative 6 is positive 120. Divide by 4. So the answer is r equals 30. Another type of variation is joint variation. Joint variation occurs when one quantity varies directly as the product of two or more other quantities. So down here, notice that it says, therefore, y1 over x1 times z1 equals y2 over x2 times z2. So it's going to be the product of two or more quantities. So suppose y varies jointly as x and z. So what that means initially is that y is going to be on one of the fraction, part of the fractions in the numerator, and then the product of x and z will be on the other portion of the fraction, the denominator. So then we're going to find y when x equals 9 and z equals 2. So I'm going to stop right there. We're looking to find y when x is 9 and z is 2, so that would be 9 times 2 in the denominator. Then we set that equal to if y is 20, so y would be 20 in the numerator of the second fraction, over when z is 3 and x is 5. So that would be 5 for x times 3 for z, and there's the initial setup. Before I cross multiply, I'm going to go ahead and multiply the 9 times 2, and that's 18, and the 15 times 3, and that is, or 5 times 3, and that's 15, spoiler alert. And then cross multiply, so 15y will equal 20 times 18, which is 360, divide by 15, and we get an answer of y equals 24. Suppose r varies jointly as v and t, so that means r over the product of v and t is going to be part of the initial setup. Find r when v equals 2 and t equals 8, so that would be 
2 times 8, set that equal to if r is 70, when v equals 10 and t equals 4. So that would be 10 times 4. And there's the initial setup. I will go ahead and multiply 2 times 8, and that's 16. And 10 times 4, which is 40. And then when we cross multiply, we would have 40R equals the product of 70 and 16, and that is 1,120. Divide by 40, and R will equal 28. Another type of variation is inverse variation. If two quantities X and Y show inverse variation, the product is equal to a constant K. What inverse variation means is that as one value increases while the other value is decreasing. For example, speed and time for a fixed distance may vary inversely with each other, meaning the faster you go, the less time it takes you to get to some place. Reason that this section is put into this particular chapter is notice that the graph of inverse variation looks very much like a hyperbola or a reciprocal function, where as one value increases, the other value decreases. So notice that, let's say that when x is 2, y is a 3, that's about right there, but as x gets bigger, so let's say when x gets 6, y is right here, so x is now, or y is now smaller, y is just 1. So as one value is larger, the other value gets smaller. With the initial setup on inverse variation, notice that the x's or the y's are still in the numerator and the denominator, but what has happened is that one set of values have traded positions. So instead of having like x1 over y1 and x2 over y2, notice it's x1 over y2 and x2 over y1. And it doesn't matter whether you choose the, the numerator to trade or the denominator trades, one set of numerator or one set of denominator will trade. So what I would suggest that you do is just set it up like a direct variation question and then before you cross multiply, trade one set of either the numerators or the denominators, and then you have set up an inverse variation proportion. So here's an example. It says that A varies inversely as B. So that means we could put A on top and B on bottom. A is 28 and B is negative 2. So right now I'm setting it up as direct variation. So just like we did on, did on the examples prior, it's a is 28 when b equals negative 2. And then we would just set that equal to find a when b is negative 10. So that would be a over negative 10. So that's direct variation. But this is an inverse variation question. So for inverse, what I'm going to do is simply trade the numerators. And you, this will also work by trading the denominators, but don't trade them both. Trade one or the other. So for my inverse, I'm going to have a over negative 2 equals 28 over negative 10. And that's the initial setup. And then we cross multiply. So that means negative 10a will equal negative 56. Divide by negative 10. And a is going to equal positive 5.6. Next example is very similar. It says A varies inversely as Y, so that means I can start with a direct variation and then again trade the numerators to make an inverse variation. X is 24 when Y is 4. I'll set that equal to find X when Y is 12. So again, that is direct variation. Inverse variation means I'm going to swap either the numerators or the denominators. So I'll do the numerators, so that means it will be X over 4 equals 24 over 12. Cross multiply, so 12x equals 96, divide by 12, and we get x equal to 8. Finally, you can see a real-life example where inverse variation is used involving music. Uh, when you pluck a string 
what happens is it vibrates back and forth. This causes mechanical energy to travel through the air in waves. The number of times per second these waves hit our ear is called the frequency. The more waves per second, the higher the pitch. And according to this, the length of a violin string varies inversely as the frequency of its vibrations. A violin string 10 inches long vibrates at a frequency of 512 cycles per second. Find the frequency of an 8-inch violin string. So we don't have like X's and Y's or A's and B's on this one. What we really have is the length of the string. That's one of the measurements. And the frequency of the string when it's plucked. So that's how I'm going to set up my proportion. So a violin string of length of 10 vibrates at 512 cycles per second. And I will initially set that equal to, we're trying to find the length of an eight inch, or the frequency of an eight inch string. But again, that's direct variation. I want to do inverse variation. So I'm going to trade the numerators around. So I'll swap the eight and the 10. And now we'll solve this by cross multiplying. So 8x will equal 5,120 divided by eight. And we see that it is 640 cycles per second if I give it a proper label.